I've been waiting for you. Today's gonna be a pretty jam-packed day. So I'm gonna take you on a shoot to the restaurant that we're shooting today. I wanna show you my process and how I go about to setting up when I'm going to restaurants from the type of gear I'm using, how I scout the location. So all of that stuff I'm going to be telling you in this video. <laughs> At the end of the day, it's a running gun project. So, you know, there's not too much time that I'm gonna have on set and for prep. Most important now, it's time for me to like pack my gear up, make sure that I have everything in order. So that way, as soon as I get to the shoot, I could just have everything in place. Remember this video that I created like a while ago on how I create my YouTube process? Yeah, so there is that app that I use in there that's called Todoist. I use that app to write down all the gear that I'm going to need. I write them down in a checklist and then I go down the list and check them off and make sure that everything is packed. Of course, there's gonna be like random pieces that you're going to just be like, oh, you know what, let me bring that with me just in case. But at the end of the day, you know, creating a list, a gear list is going to make sure that you're not missing your camera, you're not missing your softbox or light. I remember one time I went to a shoot, I forgot the whole camera. How the hell do you forget a camera? Luckily, there was a rental company right down the street and I was able to get a camera on the spot. So a gear list is very important. This is the camera that I use, which is the Z cam, my microphone, the NTG5. And I'm also going to pack up this softbox and the C-stand. Now the thing about restaurants is not all restaurants are created equally. The thing about C-stands is they're pretty inconvenient in certain times. So it's either you have a C-stand or you could get like a regular light stand. In this particular space that we're going to, I'm not sure if we have enough room for all of that. I'm gonna bring one C-stand just in case and I'm going to bring a lot of light stands. I decided to do this part of the video a voiceover because I didn't have time to stop continuously to update the vlog. Anywho, the first thing I did when I got to the restaurant is I scouted the location and um, how I did that was I looked for where the natural light was coming from because I knew I wanted to use that to motivate my lighting. Now the second thing I do is, is set up my camera gear. Then I went ahead to fix my microphone. Now I had my microphone boomed right over the client. I basically gave it a pretty wide range for the microphone to capture the audio. Once I do that, I go ahead to frame the shot specifically on the client now that the talent is sitting there. I'm using an 85 millimeter for this specific shoot because the space allowed me to go that far back and second, I wanted a deeper shallow depth of field in the back of the talent. So that way it could make the video quality looks superb. Now, another thing that you have to keep in mind when you are on these shoots is that you will have to coach the talent to help them stay consistent with their posture. So that way you could have a better outcome of the shoot. As far as sound goes, there were no treatment done to this room. So I asked them to shut the doors in the restaurant so that way the outside noise won't really impact the audio that we're capturing from the talent. Now lastly, what I did with my lighting, I decided to put a kicker light last minute behind the client because I felt like the ambient light wasn't doing it enough for me. I used a 60 white light with a reflective dome on it and inside the reflective dome, I placed a honeycomb mesh to help direct the light directly to the client so that way the light's not spilling everywhere. Now lastly, it's all about doing your mic check. So what I did was I asked the client to speak exactly how he's going to speak throughout the whole interview. So that way I can gauge a median on how loud I can expect him to get throughout the whole shoot. Once the interview was done, now it was time for B-rolls. I'm going to create a separate video on how I shoot B-rolls. So that way you guys can get a really good idea of what I do when I shoot my B-rolls for my videos. Essentially what I do is I shoot everything that moves and everything that can potentially move and everything that's thinking about moving. Simply because you don't know what the edit is going to look like. And in shoots like this, it's always better to have more B-rolls than not having enough. I made sure I grabbed B-rolls of the talent as much as I could have 
the food being served, B-rolls of the exterior and interior as well, and the little details that makes the restaurant pop. Always keep that in consideration whenever you're shooting your B-rolls. So that way, you know, when it comes to post, you could have enough B-rolls for your main edit. And if you want to create a social media promo, you will have enough B-rolls to do so. So yeah, this was it for the shoot. I hope you learned a lot from it. And if you have any questions, let me know in the comments. If you're new to the channel, hit that subscribe button so you can see more videos like this. And until next time, I will see you on my next one. Deuces.